on the bench today is this Yaesu FT736R VHF and UHF all mode transceiver. And the problem with this is that it doesn't power up. This rig has a built in switching power supply that is actually known to fail as these rigs age. So to verify this, uh, we'll just disconnect the line cord and then pull out the pigtail. This pigtail actually runs from the internal power supply and brings 13.8 uh, volts into the rig. So I'll just supply power directly here from an external power supply and see if the rig powers up. And if it does, that'll tell us that the problem is, is rooted in this power supply as we suspect. Okay, I've got an external power supply hooked into the DC jack and yeah, we power it up and it does indeed work. And we can see that this rig is loaded up with the 50 meg, uh, 146 meg, 440 meg, and 1296 meg uh, modules. So it's a nice fully loaded rig. So uh, it also looks like uh, the dial light is out here. Uh, the dim light seems to work on the vacuum fluorescent display, but there's no dial light on the meter. So it looks like we have a second little problem, but that, uh, that is secondary to uh, fixing the power supply, I think. So let's, uh, let's deal with the power supply first and see where we go from there. And we'll start off by uh, pulling the covers. Yeah, with the bottom cover off the rig, we can see the optional 50 meg and 1.2 gig module sitting here. And this uh, is the switching power supply. Okay, to remove the power supply module, there are three screws that go through the back here that uh, attach this metal heat sink plate to the back panel, so they come out of the back. And then there are two screws on this metal plate holding it down uh, to the chassis inside. So you've got to remove all of those and then wrestle out the little strain relief for the pigtail out of the back of the chassis. With that out, uh, the power supply is out, we can remove the shield and the circuit board and go on to fix the problem. Okay, so there's five small screws to remove to take the shield off of this uh, power supply. And with the shield off, uh, we can see uh, what the problem is. Uh, there are a couple of power resistors in here. Uh, these two 33 ohm resistors here uh, they dissipate enough power that if you look carefully, you can see how the board is discolored. It's a little bit brown. And look what's sitting right next to them. At least two electrolytic capacitors. So these things are getting cooked and getting dried out. They get dried out, their capacitance goes down, their ESR goes up, and eventually the power supply fails. Now these two capacitors are most likely uh, faulty right now. And it's also possible that these two guys, which are sitting right next to the transformer, uh, they could have gotten dried out and, and their values have changed. Um, there's also a couple of other electrolytics in here, uh, over here, here, these two large filter cans. Uh, all of these are potentially suspect because they've been sitting inside this power supply with a lot of heat being generated. Now I mentioned up front that this is a fairly well-known problem and it's actually documented pretty well uh, online. I'll put a couple of links in the video description down below of where I found this information. Uh, there's some really good documents uh, that describe the problem um, and I also have lists of all the components uh, you know, to go uh, purchase to do the replacement. Uh, I found out that uh, document was prepared several years ago and a couple of the part numbers that are on that list, like for DigiKey, are not valid anymore. So uh, I had to kind of find additional you know, replacements for those. So what I'll do also, uh, linked down below, is a, a PDF file uh, of the, uh, the list of components that I purchased uh, to repair this power supply. Okay, with the board removed from the chassis, we can actually see the discoloration of the circuit board even here underneath those power resistors. So we'll take a really close look also under the magnifier at the quality of these various solder joints. Uh, they tend to become brittle. Uh, with that thermal cycling. So uh, in addition to replacing the capacitors, we'll just make sure that all of these solder joints are good and fresh and don't have any fractures or anything like that in them. So that'll just be part of uh, the refurbishment. The two capacitors that are most likely worst damaged are these two guys here. This guy C12 right next to the resistors and this guy here which is C9. Let's pull both those first and make some measurements and then we'll just do a bulk replacement of all the rest. Level when the part just drops out of the board after doing the desoldering. This is a 220 microfarad capacitor. So let's go take a look and see what it measures on the multimeter here. Uh, okay, <laughs> a little bit unsteady there. There we go. 
33 microfarads. That's a far cry from 220. So I would say it's pretty well dried out and used up. Not even, I'm not even going to bother trying to measure ESR on it. Yeah, so here's the replacement 220 microfarad capacitor, and it's reading correctly, so it's ready to get installed in the board. And of course, when you're doing this, make sure that uh, you get the positive and negative uh, squared around right when you install it in the board. The capacitors are usually marked on the body, usually on the negative side for electrolytics. If the capacitors are too small to be marked, then usually the leg that's cut the shortest is the negative side of the capacitor. Yeah, make sure we get the negative going into the negative side. Push that in place and uh, pull the leads back here. Get ready to solder that. Okay, we've replaced uh, all of the electrolytics and I touched up a couple of the joints on the uh, back side of the board that looked a little dull, like they might be uh, stressed a little bit from thermal cycling and uh, cleaned up the board and we're ready to put everything back together. Alright, all the screws in place, let's uh, put this back in the rig. And the three screws in the back that are tying in the uh, power devices into the heat sink. Okay, next we snake in the uh, wires through the slot in the back here and then get the uh, strain relief snapped back into the hole. There we go. Now, before putting all the covers on, we'll do a quick check to make sure that the power supply is working. Yep, and we're powered up uh, off of the line supply. So that uh, repair to the power supply was successful, brings the rig up. Okay, we've got everything back together. Uh, this rig is rated for 25 watts on VHF and UHF. So we'll just verify that we're uh, getting that out of it, and that'll tell us that the power supply can deliver uh, the sufficient current to operate this rig. So just in the 2 meter band, uh, the FM mode, got a 50 watt slug in the bird watt meter here. And if we key up, uh, we can see the power is just a little over uh, 25 watts. So uh, we're getting full power on FM. We'll put the meter into peak reading mode, switch to upper sideband, and, uh, and now if I key the rig and speak, we can see that the peak reading is also uh, just exceeding uh, 25 watts here on the, uh, on the voice peaks. So that tells us we're getting uh, full power uh, out of the power supply and can, the rig can operate at its full rated output power. Now the only remaining problem with the rig is that uh, I've got no backlight here on the uh, on the S meter. I made some measurements while we were inside and found that the two incandescent bulbs that light up the S meter were both burned out. And it's kind of a known thing with this rig as well. The backlighting of the of the meter is not very good to begin with and uh, it also uh, the bulbs tend to burn out early. So I uh, discussed with him the uh, possibility of trying to convert them over to LED. Uh, but he said, now he'd rather have it uh, put back the way it was new. So uh, I did find that Yesu uh, has some of the uh, bulbs uh, available in their part stock. So I ordered a couple of bulbs, and when they come in, uh, we'll replace those. So this will do a part two repair video uh, to replace the, uh, the lights for the meter. Anyway, that uh, completes the power supply repair. Got this rig back up and running on line voltage. And uh, once we... Uh, do the second repair for the uh, S-meter backlight, we should be good to go. And if you like what you see in this repair video, give me a good thumbs up. If you had subscribed already, please do so. And thanks again for watching.